Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to show you the Lejal trap. Some people also call it the legal trap, but I think this should be wrong because the trap was first played in 1750 in Paris by a French player named Lejal. And yeah, so I think this should be the right pronunciation, right? Anyway, let's go back to the trap. Even if it's over 250 years old, the trap is still quite common in beginner's chess. And the reason for this is it's more like a motif that can occur in many variations. And one of the variations you can see already on the board, it's white to move and win right on the spot. But take your time. Before we jump right into the tactic, I of course want to show you how to reach the position. And what you can do is black to avoid to get trapped. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. So the game that we are following is a game between Nasir and Abir. And as I already mentioned in the introduction, I could have chosen plenty of other games as well because the trap is quite common and is around for over 250 years. So many black players fall for the trap over the time. So anyway, let's get started with the game. The game started with the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. And after bishop c4, we reach the Italian game. Here black has some quite good options like bishop c5 or just entering the two knights defense with knight to f6. Instead black decided to play d6. Um, this move isn't a blunder but it's quite passive and it's not my cup of tea and I think this move isn't the best. So anyway white moved on with developing and played this knight to c3. And here black played bishop to g4. His plan is that he wants to pin our knight so that he can jump in with his other knight and making even more pressure on our f3 knight at a certain point. So white thought, well, I should ask black questions right away and played h3. And here black already played the blunder, he played the bishop to h5. Black's best move would have been bishop takes f3 because after queen f3, threatening mate on f7. So um, black cannot play a move like knight e4 before, because it's mate. Um, black should instead play a move like knight f6 and white should play knight e2 to protect the d4 square from a knight. And yeah, we easily can stop here. I would say white has a slight advantage, but it's not huge. Um, black, for example, could play moves like g6, bishop c7, castling. At a certain point you can also think about attacking our bishop with knight a5 and white instead probably wants to sh castle short, playing c3, d4, developing the bishop. So there are still plenty of possibilities and nothing is decided yet. Instead black played the mistake and he played bishop h5. And believe it or not but this position is already won for white. Um, I would advise you to pause the video and try to figure out what White's best move is in this position. I give you three seconds to pause the video. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, that's not a problem. I will give you a little hint. The hint is that sometimes it's even worth to sacrifice the queen even if you're only winning a pawn. So. With that hint, I give you three seconds again to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is knight takes e5 x clam. So, why does it work? Well, the, the most beautiful line for white would be if black would accept the queen sacrifice and take the queen on d1. Because now it's a pretty, pretty nice mate after Bishop takes f7 check, the king has only one move, he has to go to e7 and now the knight comes in and it's made. 
this knight guards this square, this knight that guards this square, and the bishop guards this squares. He's bl Black's king is blocked by his own pieces, and so it's simply made. It's a really, really beautiful mate. And yeah, many games were won that way, so really nice. But um, Black can do better. He could, for example, grab the knight. So he's um, right now he's up a knight. And I hope you saw this variation because um, it's probably one of Black's best tries. And he argues, well, dude, your queen is attacked. Oops, red. And your bishop is attacked. So what are you doing? Well, of course, we are taking the bishop. And after, let's say, knight takes c4, we have the beautiful move queen to b5 check, attacking king and, rook, uh, and um, knight at the same time. So after queen d7 and queen takes c4, we can easily stop at this point, but other pawn um, have a small advantage in development. And yeah, this is already better for white. So what else could black try? Well, I just want to show you one more line, and this is d takes e5. Um, here we could just grab the bishop, threaten again the mate on f7. So black probably will be a, uh, used to play g6, and here we should just simply retreat our queen to d1. And again, we're up a pawn, so there are no threats against us, and yeah, this should be an easy game for white. So you may ask, well, why didn't this trap work one move earlier? Can you remember that at this point, after the move um, bishop to g4, we played h3? So I would advise you to think about this position and think about why knight to e5 doesn't work in this position. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, I want to give you a little hint. Um, my hint is that black, if black would grab the queen, then it would work. But black doesn't have to grab the queen. And so with that hint in mind, try to figure out why knight takes e5 doesn't work in this position. I'll give you three seconds again to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. Knight takes e5 doesn't work because in this position, black can simply just grab the knight back with this knight. And now he's attacking our bishop and our queen at the same time, but our queen cannot take back the, knight, uh, the bishop because it's guarded by the knight. So our best move would have been queen e2, uh, bishop e2, sorry. And after bishop takes e2, queen takes e2, and knight c6, um, threatening moves like knight to b4 and perfecting black from a potential b4. Um, yeah, black's already better. He's up a piece against the pawn and I wouldn't like to be white in this position. So I told you earlier that this trap was first played in 17 and 50 and I thought it would be nice if I will show you the original game as well. You have to know that in the original game it was a show game and Ligier agreed that he will be down a rook right from the start. So you have to imagine that this rook isn't on a field because yeah, both players agreed that white is starting the game by being a rook down. So the game started with the moves e4, e5, knight f3. And here black um, decided to play d6 right away, going into the filter defense. And white played bishop c4, and black played bishop to g4. Again, the knight is to three move, and here black played blunder g6. And now again comes the trap. This time we can grab the pawn on e5, because there's no knight that could grab our knight back. So black decided to grab the queen but even if he didn't uh, he, he's still worse because we simply win a pawn and have a great position so bishop takes d1 and again here comes the mate so with this position i will end the video 
I hope you liked it. If you did, please let me know in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. See you next time when it's again time to checkmate.